Hi, I'm Patrick Walsh. Hi, I'm Colt Fredrickson. And today we're going to talk about vector databases and security. So um, IronCore has this product, Cloaked AI, and it encrypts vectors. And I think many people might have no idea what that even means. So Colt, what are vectors? Uh, vectors are just simply uh, basically arrays of numbers or lists of numbers. They're numbers usually between negative one and one in this context, and they hold meaning for whatever we're talking about, text, uh, images, things like that. Uh, and they could be used in a wide variety of situations. So like how many, how many numbers are we talking here? Uh, some vectors can be as small as um, a few dozen, and some can be as big as thousands and thousands. And, and they're vectors because in math, uh, a vector is like a, a direction, like basically a point in space and, and sort of an arrow and 2d or 3d, you can picture it really well, but th these being a thousand numbers, it's a thousand dimension space, but it represents kind of an arrow, right? Right. It represents an arrow, but I don't know of anybody who can think of it that way. So when we talk about numbers that are this high dimensionality, uh, usually people don't think about them as arrows, but you can think about them that way. So, so how are they used? What are they used for? Uh, in this context, they're used to basically find what the closest thing is to something else. Uh, that's what we usually talk about when we talk about vectors. So like in a vector database, you could find out um, using AI, you could figure out what's closest to the meaning of the sentence, uh, I live in Hawaii. And it's like, well, is this sentence talking about living somewhere? Is this sentence talking about Hawaii? And AI models are really good at taking human words and boiling them down into these numbers. And it's capturing more meaning, right? As opposed to words at all, really. It, it's it's about the idea of, of living somewhere, residing somewhere, right. staying somewhere. Um, right. It's, a, it's more of a feeling and what the sentence refers to and means rather than exact text match. Like you might not be talking about living. You might talk about being somewhere or I am somewhere and M and live aren't the same, but they kind of mean the same. Yeah. It's, it's like for, for if we were thinking in 2d or 3d space, that those two things that are very similar would be kind of like two arrows that are right next to each other. Whereas kind of something that has a different meaning would be like an arrow pointing in two different directions, except right. there's way more directions than you can really fathom brain probably. Yep. So how do you make these things? Where do they come from? Um, they are basically put out by AI models in the context that we're talking about here, um, where you feed in something like a face into a model that's trained on faces and it spits out like a vector of numbers that means all the features of your face. Or you feed in a sentence and it spits out a bunch of numbers that are what it thinks that sentence means. Yeah, so then once you have some input that's been turned into this set of numbers that holds meaning that's really specific to that one model, right? Then then you can do that similar those similarity checks like similarity searches so you could search for an image by an image or search for a face by starting with another face or search for a, a, a sentence or a query or a question by finding stuff that's related to and similar to that or at least other sentences maybe that are related to it is that is that yep yeah i mean that's the that is what everybody is trying to do with all of these vectors and all the ai um hubbub that's going on where people are trying to figure out how to best utilize these vectors and um, make use of them inside of their business. Yeah. So like rag, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So like one of the ways that we're seeing it a lot right now is in these chat bots and they do this thing called retrieval augmented generation or rag, which we won't get into in this video, but is is a pretty popular way of finding information that's relevant to someone's questions and, and then allowing a, an AI model to use that extra information to answer the question. Right. Yeah. Okay. So 
you got all these vectors there, a bunch, a bunch of numbers are totally meaningless um, to anyone, maybe except for someone like doing a search on it from one vector to another. Is that is that true? No. It turns out that that's not true, even though they look like they're entirely meaningless to human or to, yeah, to human, they are not meaningless to a computer. And you can actually train another AI model to basically recognize what they are and reverse them. And it's actually very easy to do. Um, we have a couple blog posts that show how to do it in different forms, text and in facial recognition form. And it's remarkable to me because at when I saw these numbers at first, I thought they were also closer to a hash, which is basically like you input text and out the other side comes some numbers and those numbers don't mean anything to a human and you can't go back. Um, but it turns out that is very not true. And there's a bunch of research papers out there showing different ways to attack them. Yeah. And in your, in your blog post on uh, reversing text embeddings, I think you said something like 37,000 entries in Google Scholar or something. Yeah. And that's probably outdated. There's probably already no papers out in the last, you know, weeks or months. Yeah. That's crazy. And I, I, I think there weren't any papers from before like 2020 on this, right? It was like, <laughs> yeah. It's a little explosion I mean, the, the, in a whole new field of attacking stuff. Right. The OpenAI rush uh, with ChatGPT has brought it to everybody's, for, the forefront of everybody's mind of how to use these things to basically make their business better, faster, operate more seamlessly. Um, but people are just treating these things like they're just numbers and they're useless and they're not being very careful with them. I mean, so... So they are meaningful and they can be reversed. So what's a way to protect them then? So yeah, you can protect them by encrypting them. And if you don't need to search on them, you could encrypt them just using normal encryption. You could just use AES and encrypt them and that would be fine, um, but that doesn't make them very useful. So what you can do instead is you can use a, a distance preserving encryption. Um, Cloaked AI does this in this way where you basically shift all the numbers in what seems like random directions, but it makes it so that the distance between the old one and the new one are the same, even though they look completely different. And again, this is basically impossible for humans to like see in their brains, but basically the vector still points in the same direction and is still close enough to another one uh, that is encrypted with the same key. I mean, does or it one point that in has the same, the same meaning. Well, the encrypted one points in the same direction as another one that's encrypted that's like it. Yeah. So that's that's what's important, is that it preserves the distance between things. So I misspoke when I said they point in the same direction as the input. They point in the same direction as inputs that are encrypted with the same key. So if you have a, if you have a different key or if you don't have access to the key, there's, there's no starting point for any kind of comparison. Right. And in fact, it's yeah, not it the makes same the numbers... distance. It's just approximately, relatively similar distances. Such right. as, so you can't really even map these things without the key to, to unlock it. Can you right. decrypt so these, by the way? You can decrypt them. Uh, it is subject to some lossiness because of floating point number math, but it's very, very close to the decrypted uh, value. We actually also support in Cloaked AI an encryption of the source text uh, in either a deterministic way or if you don't need to match on it deterministically in just normal AES encryption way so that you can you know keep the source text that generated the uh, embedding along with your embedding uh, to keep that safe as well. Or if, if people are putting in URLs or IDs they can opt to encrypt those and sometimes I think some of these vector databases let you do extra filtering before you do matching so if you wanted to tag things with a geography or a right. category or whatever, then you could limit your search based on that. And But if that data were, you know, PII or you know, some, some protected class of information that was private that you wouldn't want to leak, you could still encrypt it and filter on it using our stuff, right? Right. Yep. The only operations we really support on distance preserving encryption is that distance check. Um, being able to figure out things that are similar to it. Um, and that's what we're optimizing for because that's 
the way this data is being used is distance preserving um, in nature. Yeah, right. I mean, there's no real reason to use these vectors except to do like, well, similarity comparison checks or clustering, which is basically based on the same thing. So you can like cluster stuff and you might find a bunch of faces that are the same that way or or you could look for things that aren't in clusters to find anomalies that are like outside of the clusters of normal behavior and there's something that's not in it or right you so you can still do all that if you have the key and you can make the queries right yep definitely so how important is this like sh should everyone be encrypting their vectors um the crazy thing to me about this type of encryption is that you lose almost nothing by encrypting it uh, what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to put it into you know, Quadrant or Weaviate or Pinecone or any of these other vector databases, and you're wanting to find things that are close to it. And once you do that, that's what you wanted to do with it. Sometimes you lose things when you lose functionality when you encrypt. Um, like encrypted search is a, is a good example, which we're not going to get into here, but you lose functionality when you when you do that. Here, there's just not really any reason not to encrypt them. It's easy, it's fast, and you don't lose functionality. Like it doesn't make any sense to not do it, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, if you if you look in the market right now, there's there's like dozens of vector database companies now that hold these things. I mean, you don't have to use a vector database, by the way. There's other ways to do it, but uh, especially for more dynamic data, the vector database thing is the way to do it. And we support all of them. Uh, doesn't matter if someone else is hosting the data, you can encrypt it before you send it to them. And a lot of these companies are pretty new. A lot of them, all their employees have access to the production data, right? Like there's a lot of things going on in the vector database world. And even if you host your own and you do your own thing, I guarantee your team doesn't really know how to secure these things yet. The software doesn't have the power of good security controls in it yet. Like you're, as far as from my point of view, the vector databases are, are not super safe or secure for keeping data today at all and it's a no-brainer to encrypt the data before it goes in if there's not a huge cost impact so and right and yeah we yeah in our in our iron core alloy uh uh github repo we have examples on how to do this with you know weaviate quadrant open search elastic search and we're okay. probably adding more so it's it's just not that hard to do and if you don't trust a company with all of your data in a relational database. Why would you trust them with all your data in a vector database? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. This has been great. So uh, wrapping it up, vector databases. Seems like we should encrypt the stuff going in there. Seems like it's pretty easy to do. Seems like there's not really a downside. Fair yep. summary? Yep. Let's do it. All right. Good talking to you, Colt. See you later. Good talking to you.